So in Hirons, you can deconvolve your images in two ways, uh, with a theoretical point spread function or a measured point spread function. So in most cases, just using a theoretical or automatic point spread function is totally fine. It will give you a very good result. But in some cases, for example, if you know there's some misalignment in your microscope and that you cannot easily correct for with a theoretical PSF, you might want to use a measured PSF. So in this tutorial, I will show you how you can get started um, with using a measured PSF for deconvolution. So when you would want to use a measured PSF for deconvolution, you first need to image um, small point-like particles such as fluorescent beads and typically what people use are 100 nanometer sized beads so 100 nanometer in diameter but you can practically use any bead that is between 100 and 200 nanometer in practice so you would want to use the same fluorophore uh, excitation and emission range of the fluorophores that you use in your actual sample so in this example here I already loaded in two images so these are 3d volumes so I can also show you this in the thumbnail in the 3d thumbnails so this is of the same bead sample uh, so we see two beads in each field of view and it's a 3d stack and that is very important to realize that in order to capture the point spread function you need to image a z stack the beads also need to be well spread so there needs to be sufficient distance uh, around each bead and that allows you to extract the point spread function more accurately. So we can extract the point spread function from such bead images uh, by simply selecting one of them and then go to deconvolution and PSF distiller wizard. So the PSF distiller wizard is a wizard that guides you through the process of distilling the measured point spread function from your bead images. So we can just click on the next button here uh, to go to the next stage in the wizard. And the first stage allows you to inspect the microscopic parameters. So if you always work with the raw microscopy file formats, then most of these parameters should already be set automatically. But it is always good practice to, to check the parameters, such as the pixel sampling, the Z sampling, numerical aperture, uh, and wavelengths, for example. So you can let Huygens know that you verified all these parameters by clicking Set All Verified. And we can go to the next stage. So in the next stage, you need to tell the PSF distiller what kind of beads you use, so how large the beads are in diameter. So in this case, these were 100 nanometer beads, so we'll enter that value. And for the signal-to-noise ratio, you would want to enter a value that you would normally also use as if you would deconvolve this image with the CMLE algorithm in Huygens. So 40 is a very good default signal-to-noise ratio for most bead images. So we click on next and the PSF distiller automatically detects which beads are useful to be used for the distilling process. So these are highlighted in green. So in this case, it found two usable beads. Uh, if there are beads that are too close to the edge, for example, it will highlight them in red. And if there's different reasons why the beads might be discarded, it will show them in different colors. So we can go to the next stage and here we can already uh, choose to distill the point spread function, but alternatively we can also load another bead image. So we'll do that here because we have a second bead image and the PSF distiller automatically detects that there's another useful image that has the same parameters which might be suitable this. So we'll select this one here and go to the next stage. And the distiller asks us if we want to accumulate this second image as well to the first one. So we'll accumulate it. So here it mentions again, we found two new beads in the second image. So we have a total number of beads that were averaged of four. So the average bead is shown here on the right hand side. And this averaging process allows you to get rid of the noise and background um, and blurring of the beads already. And the point spread function distilling process then allows you to extract the point spread function from this average bead. So in the final stage, we can say we want to distill the point spread function from this. So this may take a few seconds. And when it is done, 
we can either do a full width half maximum estimate or export and close so that we can directly use the PSF, but it is useful to always inspect the full width half maximum as well. So let's click on that. And here we can inspect in X, Y, and Z what the full width half maximum is. So we see here in X, Y, it's about 200 nanometer and in Z around 600 nanometers, which are the values that we would expect for uh, yeah, such a confocal point spread function. You can also do a fit, so if for example a Gaussian fit, so let's have a look at that as well. So it gives a Gaussian fit, the full width half max of the X, Y, and Z dimensions. So when we click on export and close, we have the distilled point spread function as a new image. So this is also a 3D image and we can use it directly for deconvolution. So it's fully normalized so that uh, your deconvolution results can also be quantified. And you can load it, for example, in the deconvolution wizard in the first stage. So if you would use the deconvolution wizard in the first stage, you can choose a measured PSF. Now, if you don't have a measured PSF, you can just continue to use the theoretical PSF. So that is no problem at all. But if you have this measured PSF using this distilling process, you can select it as at this stage. In case you want to use the measured PSF for the batch processor, so for batch processing, then you first need to save the PSF to disk. And for that, we recommend to save the PSF as either HDF5, ICS, or ICS2. And the reason behind this is that it will keep the original bit depth, so 32-bit floating point uh, format. And in addition, it will also store the microscopic parameters. So these are needed for accurate uh, deconvolution results. So always make sure to store your PSF as either HDF5 or uh, one of the two ICS formats. So if you do multi-channel imaging, then you would want to use uh, beads that are also imaged in multi-channels. So we would recommend Invitrogen Tetraspec beads for that. And these can be excited with four different excitation colors in the spectra of the most widely used fluorophores. So this is very useful to directly image four channel point spread functions. And it has the simultaneous advantage as well that you can also do chromatic aberration uh, estimation afterwards. So yeah, that's it.